Hey guys, Chris from Average Eastgate Reviews here and today you join us in London, as promised. You can see Tower Bridge behind me. We came all the way down here just to film this review for you guys. So what we're gonna be looking at is a full review of the XY Atlas Pro. Um, this is a carbon board, it's four wheel drive. You know that's something that I'm technically not really a fan of, but this has honestly converted me straight away. Something I've seen in comments a lot is four wheel drives are overpowered, they're needless. The top speed is the same, like why do you need them? That's like saying why do you need Ferraris, Lambos and GTRs that have over a thousand brake horsepower. Yeah, you're still limited to the speed limits of the road, but when you wanna go for a rip, you wanna have that beastly acceleration, that savage braking, and that thrilling ride, that's what four wheel drive boards are for. So anyone that says they're overpowered or unnecessary, honestly, you need to ride a good one and then you'll know exactly why they're required. But this thing is an absolute monster and I'm looking forward to sharing my thoughts and opinions on what it's been like for myself. Now, of course, before we jump into the video, make sure that you thumbs up and also subscribe so you can stay up to date with all of the videos that we post. Now, let's get into it. Of course, like any other video I create, we're gonna be splitting this video into categories. The first one is gonna be the ride. Now this being a four wheel drive board, this being my first experience of owning one, now normally I would ride Ricky's four wheel drive boards but I've never had my own. It's definitely an adjustment period and I said this in the first impressions video. You need to get used to the weight, the length of the board, the fact that you've got motors in front of you and behind you while you're riding around. When you look down, it's just something that's a bit unnatural if you're used to riding two wheel drive boards but that's something that you overcome pretty quickly. Now, the ride on this board has been surprisingly good. The fact that it's a carbon deck, and I don't like carbon decks, and I've had such a good time with this one, is pretty sensational, it's pretty impressive. Riding around the streets, the carbon deck, of course, is gonna be a lot stiffer than what I like, which is a bamboo deck, so it means that I am gonna feel a lot more of those bumps and vibrations. But the way that I ride this board is very different to the way that I'd ride one of my other bamboo boards, where I'm kind of snaking around the road, going in and out the white lines, carving. This is more of just, power, acceleration, and crazy top speed, and being able to just blast through streets. And when you're riding with somebody like Ricky, who has a board that does 46, 47 miles an hour, you need something that's gonna be able to keep up when you're ripping around London. So the ride has been very, very good, but specifically for picking up a board and just abusing the streets of London, this is definitely gonna be the type of board that I'd like to do that with. Now, of course, when you look at carving, you can carve with a four wheel drive board, but it is bigger, it's heavier, so you're not gonna be able to snake around as effectively, as smoothly, as crazy. Now, of course, if you loosen up the trucks a lot more, you can, but that defeats the point for me because I want sheer power and acceleration and top speed, which this board has plenty of, but I can't do that and carve at the same time. So that's the compromise. When I want power, acceleration and top speed and just a thrill and a rush, that's exactly what this board is for. But if I wanna just go out and carve and do nothing but carving, this wouldn't be the type of board that I would kind of gravitate towards for those particular types of riding styles. But in the city, ripping through traffic, this thing's just unreal. Now, of course, if you do want the option of being able to carve with this board, you can just take off the front motors and then you have a two wheel drive board. It's still gonna be a carbon deck. That doesn't mean that you can't carve with it. Of course, there's other boards out there that are carbon decks that you can carve with incredibly savagely. But of course, that's not what I got this board for. I got this board because I wanted a four wheel drive monster. And in that department, it ticks every single box. Now, when we're looking at top speed with this board, um, it does 37 miles an hour with this particular setup I've got on it, which is six inch wheels from X-Way. They have metal hubs, they look good. They look very good. And in terms of the build quality, I'll touch on that later, but very impressed. The top speed is, is just more than I would ever need. I wanted a board that could do kind of like 32, 33 miles an hour, or even between 29 and 31. It's kind of the mark I always like to say I'd, I'd love to have a board to be able to do. This does more than that. And like I said previously, when you're riding with boards that are much more powerful than what you traditionally are on, it's so nice to have that extra boost or power when you need it. Especially when you're riding around a city where most of the speed limits are 20 or 30 miles an hour, it means that you can always be ahead of traffic, which is a massive, massive deal, and really affects the quality of ride and experience you have when you're in a big, busy metropolitan city like London. Now, the top speed is crazy. It's absolutely crazy. I can't imagine what this board's gonna be like when I mess with the gear setups and the wheel sizes. Uh, but one thing I did have with this board that was a bit of an issue is when you hit top speed, I'm gonna to refer to it as like the deceleration curve if you like. When you hit the 37 mile an hour mark, the board kind of like hits a wall and you feel that now you've hit max speed. And the board kind of can go a bit snaky and be a little bit unpredictable at that speed and that's not ideal because 37 miles an hour you don't want something that's snaking around and a little bit hard to predict but i gave 
this feedback to X-Way immediately when I noticed this issue. They got in touch with me incredibly quickly and told me that it would be resolved before the end of this month with a firmware update. This is something that is done in the programming of the board. It's not something that's an actual issue with the motors or the motor controller or anything like that. It's something that literally just needs to be tweaked in, a, in an app and then an update sent out to all the boards and this issue is corrected. I can't really give you any more information about it because I don't really know exactly how to explain that. If you want the technical side of it, you need to hit up Ricky's channel, which I'll link down below. He'll break everything down in a lot more detail than I can because I kind of just focus on top speed and range and he goes into the specifics. So Ricky's channel will be down below in the video description where you can find out much more specific information about the components of this board, how it's constructed and how all of that tech inside here works. That's what his channel's for. So make sure you check it out and subscribe to that. But aside from that, the top speed is it's more than I'll ever, ever need. Ripping around London, I try to keep it under 34, 35 miles an hour. I don't experience any issues at that speed and it's just so much damn fun. Now, when we look at acceleration with this board, it's a four-wheel drive board. When people say four-wheel drive doesn't make sense because it still does the same top speed as if this was a two-wheel drive board, it's how it gets to that top speed. That's what you get with four-wheel drive. The torque is ridiculous. This board will wheel spin if you floor it, which is just unreal. Go! Ah, Too much spin? Yeah. You need more weight? I know. You need some cheeseburgers? There's not really much else I can say about it. The acceleration is more than you need, more than I need anyways. And even Ricky rode this board and said the acceleration was mental. So I can't really complain about that. It's smoked any board I've ridden on in terms of acceleration, but it's four wheel drive. So you can expect it to be beastly. I'll also mention that Ricky did a comparison with the acceleration on the X-Way Atlas Pro. I'll link that video down below and I'll timestamp it so you can see where he VSs it against his DIY board. So you can see how quick off the line it is. Now, when we look at braking, the complete opposite of the acceleration, again, four-wheel drive means all four wheels are braking at the same time, all four wheels are accelerating at the same time. So the braking in this board is savage. I've currently got it set to three, and that's not even halfway in terms of the strength of the braking. So this board has absolutely no problem stopping. And if you hold the brake when you're on, on an incline, and you're kind of like pointing downwards and you know a lot of boards you stop if it doesn't have reverse you'll be rolling down slowly which is annoying this board will stop and hold you there which i really like so braking four wheel drive it's unreal so in terms of the range that i'm getting out of this board this is normally where four wheel drive boards kind of show their compromise you have crazy top speed mental acceleration and braking but the range normally does suffer this board i'm getting 18 to 20 miles of range sometimes 21 it depends on how aggressively i'm riding and under what conditions of course range is incredibly subjective so always bear that in mind it depends on your build the terrain you're riding on all of that stuff the weather that can affect the range but somewhere between 18 to 21 miles of range if you weigh roughly about 75 to 80 kilograms is what you can expect which for me is is more than enough now the charge the charger that I got this board with takes roughly about 4.5 hours to charge from completely dead all the way to full, but I have the fast charger on the way which takes an hour and 30 minutes to get the board from completely dead to 100%, which is mental. It means that you could rip around a city, do sort of somewhere between 10 to 11 miles in terms of how much range you've done, stop somewhere for maybe 30 minutes, 45 minutes, and you're back up to 100% and you can go for another 20 miles if you want to. That's unreal. Now, of course, that kind of leads us on to the next subject, which is the charging. So 4.5 hours roughly from dead to 100, but that fast charger, if you get this board, I wouldn't even consider having this with a normal charger. It's pointless because when you're riding around, you don't want to have range anxiety. You want to be able to charge up pretty quickly and the fast charger with this is absolutely essential. So if you're going to be thinking about getting the Atlas Pro, make sure you get it with a fast charger because zero to 100% in about an hour and a half is mental. Now, when we look at the build of this board, that's probably one of the things that caught me off guard. The last kind of boards that we saw from X-Way properly were, I don't even remember what one of them was called, but it was kind of like their version of the Boosted board. This was a few years back. And of course the X-Way X1 and the X1 Pro, they were clean, but nothing about them looked premium. When I opened this out the box, I was like, holy crap, this looks good. I flipped the board over and then it looked even better. The bushings, the trucks, the wheels, everything on this board just looks quality, which is so good to see. You don't expect it with the price tag uh, of 1,899 US dollars, which is mental. So in terms of the build and the price of this board, it's, it's unreal. I don't really have many complaints. The trucks, I'm gonna say, are probably one of the other biggest surprises. They're wider 
than some of the other boards that I traditionally ride, which is nice. It means you're more stable. This is the quickest board that I've owned, so it being more stable is always appreciated. The bushings, I'm probably gonna switch them out for Riptide bushings, just because I feel like they're always gonna be better, but I've not really had an issue with these bushings. I didn't feel the need to switch them out immediately. I did try Ricky's Riptide bushings. I did feel a difference, but I didn't fancy paying 40 pounds for, for bushings. <laughs> <laughs> so he's just pulling these pads right now. Honestly, so I was just like, no, I'm not doing that. So I've kind of stuck with these, but at some point I'm gonna take the plunge, spend the money and get better quality visions, but no real complaints. But like I said, I'm 75 to 80 kilograms. They've worked fine. I've still got them now and I've put a fair few miles on this board already. So I'm happy with them. Well, something else I wanted to mention with the wheels. Um, so overall the trucks are great. They're wider than I'm used to, which means more stability. They're really good quality. They've even got like X-Way engraved on them, little things like that. It just looks nice. Like I said, nothing on this board looks cheap. The wheels are metal, which is always appreciated when you're spending that kind of money. I don't really expect to get metal hubs, so that was pretty cool. And Ricky was also telling me, I didn't even know this, but you can switch out the wheels. Like if you get a flat or you need to switch out the wheels because they're worn away and you want more grip, you don't need to remove the hub and take the belt off and all of that jargon. You can literally just deflate the tire and with the tool that comes inside the box, you can slip off the wheel and the inner tube at the same time, pop on a new one and pump it up. So that was nice to have the ability to switch out wheels on the fly. That's a pretty cool feature to have. Now, when we look at the deck, it has a very, very mild W concave. It doesn't really have a drop down on it. It's quite straight, which which again was quite surprising because the speed this board hits, I felt like I'd want a drop down. But one thing I do like is because the board doesn't have a drop down, even though I am a fan of drop downs, don't think I'm trying to change my stories. I love a drop down deck, but the power and speed that this board has and the aggressiveness of the braking, sometimes I do brake hard and need to run off the board and not having that drop down means it's a lot easier to kind of hop off the board if you need to. So that is nice, um, but the grip tape itself it's a bit more extreme than I would like because there's a lot of it on the board and it's not too thick like, what's that grip tape called, Rick? Dope grip. Dope grip. It's not like dope grip where your feet sink into it and then you literally can't reposition your feet. I actually didn't like dope grip because of that. Uh, but this grip tape, I felt like offered me a really good balance of having grip when I'm carving or when I'm kind of like blasting through streets and around the city. But then if I needed to adjust my feet mid-ride, I could still do that. So really, really happy with the grip tape. I felt like it was a really, really good balance. Other things I've got to say about the deck itself, it's obviously a carbon board, so everything's enclosed. The belly of the board is completely smooth. There's no grooves and notches. It has obviously the base plate on top that you unscrew to get into the electronics and the battery of the board. This thing just looks nice. It's so thin considering how much skateboard you're having here, which I really love. And the fact that it's completely smooth and seamless on the bottom makes it really easy to carry because this thing is pretty heavy. Now, when we look at the disadvantages of having a 4x4 or the X-Way Atlas Pro, now this is gonna be very subjective, I have to mention that, but one of the ones that I have to say is gonna be the weight. People that say that four wheel drive boards aren't much heavier than two wheel drive boards, I think that's completely false. At the end of the day, the X-Way Atlas Pro in its four wheel drive setup has two extra large motors, two extra motor mounts, the motor or the belt covers, an extra bash guard, the belts, more gears, extra electronics. This board is much heavier and much clunkier than a two wheel drive board. So if you're somebody that has to carry a board a lot, up flights of stairs, through hallways, it's definitely worth considering that when you're looking at four wheel drive versus two wheel drive. Of course, I can convert this board to two wheel drive if I wanted to, but that kind of defeats the purpose of having it. So the weight is definitely something I would mention as one of the negatives of having a four wheel drive board. But at the end of the day, the reason I got this board is so I can rip around a city. I'm not intending on commuting with this or having to carry it through a train station or up flights of stairs. There's the odd occasion where I might have to do that, but the trade-off because of the performance, the power, the torque, the speed is worth it. But the weight, definitely something I noticed. Another point that goes without mentioning is going to be servicing. Should anything hypothetically go wrong with this board, is there somewhere in the UK that I can get it fixed? Or is it going to be a case of having to triage with X-Way over emails, wait for spare parts to be shipped out? Is that what I'm going to have to do? Or is there somewhere that I can take the board to be repaired? I'll pin a comment to the top of the comment section down below once I find that information out. Because of course my board hasn't gone wrong yet, so I don't feel like it's something that I would have kind of investigated right now. But I will leave a comment pinned to the top of the comment section that will answer this question and if anyone else has got answers and you have an x-way board you've been through the process leave your comments in the comment section so we can help anyone out that's looking for this information but this is definitely an important one to consider now the one thing i didn't really like about this board is going to be the remote you guys know that i'm a big fan of the trigger system remotes i just prefer those i can't help that and i feel like 
the remote isn't something that needs to be, you know, super crazy with lots of features and screens and crazy buttons, but I just, I like to have a substantial remote in my hands. Like, is it called the V3? The X3. The X3 remote. That, I feel like that is the optimal remote for somebody like me. That is, of course, personal preference. The good thing about the X-Way remotes is that they are cheap. They do provide you with all of the information on the screen that you need. Your range, the board's battery, the remote's battery, how fast you're going, the connectivity, what gear you're in, all of that good stuff. And of course, you can tweak the settings on both the remote and the X-Way app. But I would just prefer to have a trigger-style remote. It's just what I'm used to. That's kind of really the only thing that was um, a, a bit of a kind of like a letdown with the board but overall for the money that you're spending on this thing I feel like it's a really really big winner so overall my opinion of this board has been I, I'm kind of speechless if I'm completely honest the acceleration curve issue that I talked about was the kind of like the, the main thing that I was um, flagging on this board but X-Way are correcting that which is like the fact that they hit me up and were like thank you for letting us know we'll pass this on to engineering and then they hit me back they're like yup identified we'll sort it out I'm not gonna lie I had to go to Ricky to kind of word the email because I didn't know what I was saying or what the issue was but he worded it perfectly when he had a go and then was like say this to them and we got that sorted out and then of course the remote I'd love to have a different style remote like a trigger but it's not a big deal you adjust pretty quickly I'm, I'm kind of speechless. I don't really know what to say. $1,899 for this skateboard. I don't think anyone spending that kind of money on this board is going to be disappointed. It's, it's unreal. It really is unreal. If I'm coming to a city and I want a thrill and I want to be ripping around, this is going to be the board that I'm riding because it's an absolute monster. And every time I step off this board, my knees and my hands are shaking, which is exactly what I want. As always guys, big thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you want to see more videos, please make sure you subscribe and also like the video so you can help us out, help that YouTube algorithm show our video to more people. Whatever boards you want us to look at next, or rather whatever boards you want me to look at next, comment down below and let me know. But big thank you, like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care. Peace.